right, so let's get into the use of a defensive flashlight, tactical flashlight, whatever you want to call it that makes you feel good about yourself, right? So I'm actually, I'm utilizing the very first use of it, right? Especially with a very, very high lumen output defensive flashlight. If I need to light up a room with ambient light, right? If there's three, well right now there's four of us in there, right? There's two cameramen and there's a, a guy operating the lights and myself. One of us can aim our light up at the ceiling. What color are most ceilings? Most ceilings are white, right? This light's gonna reflect off that ceiling, creating ambient light elsewhere in the room, not blinding and degrading any of our natural night vision. And now we can look around the room and search for something with enough ambient light without really washing out our own night vision. Now, once we get into more of a, a, a tactical function of it, I'm gonna talk about strobing, streaming, and then using an actual strobe function on the light itself. So a lot of people make a mistake is when they light a subject or a potential threat, they light low. Well, this is great because I can identify my target right now, right? I can see Tony over there holding his camera. The problem is he can still see my silhouette. I'm not using this beam of light right now as a use of force option to blind him. Right now in a pitch black room, he can see exactly where I'm standing, right? So if I'm gonna light someone, what I really wanna do is I wanna hit them right in the eyes, all right? By blinding them in the eyes, one, I'm using this as a use of force. I'm eliminating his ability to really see me and where I'm moving. And with the ambient ring of the light, I can see if there's anything in his hands. I can take this light and I can move it way out here. I can move and keep that light situated right in his eyes. Now a good flashlight also typically has a strobe feature, all right? Sometimes it's a double click. On this Surefire Stiletto, it's a triple click. But the, short, the strobe feature is a great function as well. Right? Now I'm simply holding down that light, I'm strobing it right in his eyes, it creates, it disorients them, it creates confusion, and I can move about this dark room pretty safely. So now let's talk about some other uses of a defensive flashlight. I'm going to talk about light and move techniques, light and move. Basically, I don't want to forecast my next position in the room. I'm going to strobe the light manually with my thumb cap and then I'm gonna to move to another known location. Then I'm gonna strobe again and move. So ideally what I'm doing is I'm moving in the dark, lighting my way, and then moving in the dark, never telegraphing my position. I'll show you what I mean. So as you strobe, you strobe, quick click of that tail cap, light your area, check your surroundings, move to a clear path. Light again, move in another direction. Light again, move, and you can move through a room pretty effectively. We can do it with the natural strobe function on these lights as well. So ideally what it comes down to, the higher the lumen, on the flashlight, a couple of things. The better use of force is gonna be against someone, a potential threat. Obviously, the brighter the light's gonna be, the higher the lumen as well. But then you run into battery time issues, run time issues, those lights tend to get pretty hot. So find a balance of what works for you, what you wanna carry daily, and what you wanna use it for and pick the best light for your function.